Yebo, yebo, yebo. Welcome to Watch Me Build It. Today I'm gonna to do a short how-to video. A lot of the watches that I build are running either the DG2813 movement, the Seagull ST1612, or the Miyota 8215. All of them have a notorious reputation for being noisy. It depends on which manufacturer you get them from. If they're well lubricated, there isn't a problem, but many of them are not that well lubricated. This is an easy problem to fix. So today's video is going to be a little how-to video on how to tame a noisy rotor. I'm not gonna waste much time on this uh, intro. Let's flip the camera, come and watch me build it. I'm hoping that you can learn how to do this for yourself. All right, folks, here we go. We've got a collection of the tools that we're gonna need for this. It's a very simple collection. This is a watch case holder. It's just gonna help keep the watch in place. Here is the watch with the suitably noisy rotor. Let me give you a demo of that. Can you hear that? A very noisy rotor. Then we have a set of tweezers, a screwdriver. This is a homemade oiler. Um, I have simply used a needle with a small hole and I've attached it to the end of a shortened skewer stick. Folk, oilers are not expensive. I really should just put the money out and buy myself a couple, but this is what I use in the meantime. I am using, this is the, the poor man's version of oiling the back of your watch. I'm using a bottle cap to store the oil. Now the oil that I'm using is hair clipper blade oil. Folks, not a recommended oil for watch repairs. Like I said, I'm doing this as a poor man's version of the job. This is not an oil that I would recommend that you use in any serious way for watch repair. I've bought myself some proper oil um, at the moment, but this is what I've been using until now, and it does do the job properly. It is designed, after all, to lubricate metal on metal, moving at high speed. But uh, no, it was never made for watches, so I need to put that disclaimer in. Then, of course, I'm going to want to remove the back of the case, and that is the weapon of choice. It is a, a soft, bouncy ball, and you would be amazed at how well it does the job. So here we go. All right, taking off the case back with these balls is a doddle. A bit of pressure. Let me zoom in over there. There we go. How difficult was that, folks? Easy enough. There's the case back off. Right, and here we have the offending party. The noisy rotor. Move the rotor, you can see the inner beauty of the watch. Now this folks is the bearing that we're wanting to wear. So what we're going to do, this is not a lot of oil necessary. One little drop in there is all you're going to need. It's more than you're going to need really. You lift the drop. the end of the oiler and you drop it in to the bearing. That that I've placed is more than enough. You do not need to get carried away with the oil. Okay. Then we're going to place this again. Now if you look carefully, can you see that there's a flat edge on that hole 
and there's the flat edge over there so you're wanting to place your rotor so that it fits well and we're back now all that's left to do is drop the screw in all right there we go back in place final tightening of the screw all right hmm is it quieter ah perhaps not perhaps not While I'm in here, I'm going to drop a bit of oil on the jewels. Just to help the movement run a little bit smoother. It's by no means a proper service, but it may just help the watch along. All right, folks, there we go. Then we want to be putting the movement holder back in. Back in. So you put it with the flange facing downwards. This is a far more affordable movement holder and this is another reason that these particular watches are so cheap. There we go. Got it seated by hand. There we go, nice and tight. Screw that, pop this out, let's see. Noticeably quieter. I can still hear it, but nowhere near as loud. There we go folks, how to oil your rotor bearing. Okay. So, as my wife says, whenever I want to do something practical, it takes about twice as long as I expected, at least. But um, all in all, that's a very quick operation. Hope it gives you a bit of hope. Go ahead, give it a go. If your watch is cheap enough, um, you don't have a lot to lose. And uh, it might just be the first time to open a case back and your first time that you have an opportunity to make your watch run a little bit smoother. Thank you for watching me build it. Thank you.